Art is always beautiful. Art, art is always a part of your soul. It might be cool to be uh, a nerd now, but it wasn't 50 years ago. I used to get beat up, I get chased home. Nobody had any idea of what I, where I was coming from. It was just really tough for me, and I finally found a couple of people that had like interests. All I know is I loved comic books and I hated school. I still go back to the old comics I love from my youth and consume them constantly. They have great memories, great storytelling. It's very simple, you can carry it with you from room to room. But no, I think art is uh, essential in inspiring everybody. And everybody is inspired by a different art. But, I mean, if you took art away, everyone would just dry up and, and, and sit in a corner and suck their thumbs. Because, I mean, without art, we have nothing to debate and to, and to discuss. Thank God for me discovering my talent because I have people that are still on the street corners, you know, or dead or in prison. There is no greater gift from God. I used to work with this person named Bob Ann Till who created this concept called uh, God Conscious Art. And what that means and the way she used to illustrate it was if you take great performers, like the ones that have gone, such as Whitney Houston, Michael Jackson, Prince, uh, they had something magical that they may not know how to do it, but it was something that was bigger than them because everybody's talent is a gift. If you don't believe in God, that's fine, but it's a gift of nature, it's a, it's a force of the heart, and if you are given that gift, it is your responsibility to let people know, not just for your own purposes, but to maybe influence somebody. Everybody has a talent. Everybody is here on Earth for one special reason, or maybe two, maybe three. I think taking any kind of first step towards creativity is a brave step and a bold step, and, and sometimes, you know, when it comes from very young, you don't even know why you're, you're pointed in that direction, and I was very lucky in that my my grandmother was a painter and my dad was a, um, a master doodler, always doodling and drawing. And, um, you know, when I discovered comic books at a young age, he was, you know, the family was very supportive, although they were very scared at the same time that I was going to be one of those kids that lived in this fantasy world, drew comics all day, wanted to be Jack Kirby, and would never move out of the basement. I feel like um, someone can see art and cry, like my buddy Kevin Smith. He literally will cry over things, lots of different things. For the most part, I feel like art, comics, um, really inspires a lot of people. And so it's good because I feel like it, uh, especially now with the internet and, and everything else, um, it really, uh, you know, it's giving people different options. When I was seven years old, I remember seeing stuff and going like, it immediately, I was like, I want to be a part of that. And I didn't know at the time it was art. You know, I didn't, real, I didn't understand the idea of art. But as I got older and I understood that I was an artistic person, I realized that art immediately, from the time I could even remember, influenced my life. And all I wanted to do was be a part of, you know, letting that art out to the world. How are you guys reflecting on um, the Sandlot and having that be a part of your life? I mean, for me, it's, it's just been a big blessing. It's cool to see, you know, almost 25 years later that this brings like genuine happiness to people. It's not like something that just comes and goes, but it like it actually help people get through and help people uh, form their opinions about you know about what life is about, friendship and camaraderie and shared interests. I think what the Sandlot stands for, especially in this day and age, and we were talking about this a little bit earlier, is that it's a team of a group of kids that are different sizes, different ages, different ethnicities and we all came together to play one American sport. And uh, I think that, especially in this day and age, the Sandlot stands for a lot more, you know, in the world we live in. It stands for something, but, you know, greater than that, you know what I'm saying? I mean, it was just, it was awesome, man. It's, you know, we're here right now doing this, like still 24 years later. It's crazy, man, and people just, when you meet fans, like they're just so happy to like to meet you and like they feel like they have this connection with you because you know, like we, they grew up with us, like literally every day, seeing our faces and like hearing us and watching us like get into this crazy adventure over and over. And I mean, people just feel like such a, you're such a part of their life. It's just an honor, man. It's really cool to like kind of just have that connection with people. So, man, I never get sick of meeting fans. It's awesome. And I agree. It really is. Um, even I felt that way even when we were down there filming and. Salt Lake City, Utah for all that time, mm -hmm. you know, just like something coming to that town and, and it was bringing the town together and I agree, that's what the movie was about ultimately, you know, uh, that's what 
sports and certain things do is you know give people a chance to put aside their differences and, and, and come together and enjoy each other. I mean, art is everything. That is our expression, you know? It is, uh, it's people being able to tell a story, whether it be with words or pictures, especially film. Film is a, is a story told with pictures. That's what, that's what the definition of a film is. Look, I'll, but you know what? Like, like at, when I look at my face, then it kind of comes back to me. Like, this is toward the end. Huh? Like, mm. This well, is like, like Tom Barry just like punched you right through. Really? And I'm looking <laughs> like, yeah, another <laughs> fucking <laughs> picture. <laughs> like, like, We're done already. <laughs> it's so strange, though. Yeah, he looks the same. The Sandlot's fenced off, but right outside the fence, uh, for the 20th anniversary, the state of Utah came and they made a, a plaque. And it said, on this date in uh, July 93, the Sandlot was made. And it has all our names and a picture and it's in the ground, it's there forever. I think art had always had the power to evoke some strong feelings in people. So does music. And um, a lot of people just listen to walls of sound, garbage, you know, but, but they don't take time to listen to any other kind of music. So they don't, they're chipping themselves out of all these myriad of feelings. And uh, art is the same way. If you look at the same junk or stare at television, you're not gonna find much art. So you gotta go where it is and, and try to create it if you can. You look for inspiration wherever you can find it. You have to have passion. Um, if some days if I'm looking for inspiration, I'll just go downtown on a Sunday morning and let the wind blow me around. You know, because you never know where you're gonna wind up or who you'll meet or talk to. I've been, I've been blessed to do to find my talent when I was in high school, and once I found it, I didn't let it go. I grew up fishing here in Connecticut, so there's a metaphor about getting a job that's related to fishing. You may go out one day, and you may not get a single bite, or you may get a bite and you lose it, or you may get six or seven, but it's about the getting out part that's the significant thing. Working on my uh, Bruce Lee chair here. Uh, Iranian logo in there, Iranian flag, the Iranian flag, trying to have peace around the world. We don't need no war, no more war. Why Chad Bruce Lee? Chad, because we need a revolutionary, we need to change the system up in a good way, you know what I mean? Um, we're talking about a society right now that literally profits in death. This is a death cult that we live in, uh, in the U.S. Uh, all the major money uh, revenues are, are from things that lead back to some type of, uh, you know, like a taking down of humanity. And that's something that we need to change. And Bruce Lee is a person to change the philosophy of thinking and, uh, and combat. You know, using the mind, not just the body. When I was a kid, I used to go to the movies on, on like the weekend with my boys and we'd go see Bruce Lee movies, Enter the Dragon, like, you know, like, it was cool because like Bruce, Bruce has so much swag, man, it was like you wanted to be Bruce. When you came out of the theater, you're like, whoa, mm, you know, you were talking like that because you wanted to feel like Bruce Lee, you know, but it's like, it's crazy. Back in the day, I'm from Detroit. It was hyped, man. I, I would come out kicking and punching, and I guess that's what some of the kids do now. The kids, you know, that watch Power Rangers come out and they emulate us. And I feel so honored to be among a league of men that inspire kids to do martial arts and, and inspire martial arts in people's lives. So, Bruce, I owe it to Bruce. He got me interested, and now I'm getting people interested. So, so. When we were doing Power Rangers after several years, I remember thinking, you know, well, is, is acting really that important a career? Um, and when it came down to, yeah, s stories are important. That's that, that's your culture. Your culture lives in stories. It's something that you can't see. It's not tangible. It's written. It's oral. So if you have storytelling, uh, I should say if you don't have storytelling, you don't have a culture, you know. Um, and the only way we can make it through the day as human beings is to perpetually lie to ourselves. Like, she really loves me, right? Yeah. She really loves. She really loves me. Yeah, and she so, really so does. So I'm gonna live in that story. That's right. I know. That's right. You know, there's a famous story about a man and a woman that loved each other very much. It's called Romeo and Juliet. Really? Yeah. They 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 fell in love at first sight, which oh, doesn't happen a lot, that's right? That's amazing. And that could happen to you, and it, you could be just like Romeo and Juliet. Really, just like. 
Yes. Sorry, Dante. Did we, did we did we go off topic? We were on the show for probably about a week before we ever even got to put on the costume. Or we had fittings, but like to actually put it on, stand in the command center, hold the helmet. So it was pretty surreal. I mean, for me, it made, just made me think of the guys who were there before us. Like, Twee was such a beloved character and so amazing. And, you know, even though I was coming on the show to take her place, I held her in such high regard. So to be able to share the same helmet and then to know that this helmet was used, you know, it wasn't this actual one, but the one we had on the show was used in the Japanese series. I mean, it's like, that's pretty awesome, you know, and it was just pretty cool. So for me, I just felt very honored to be a part of the franchise. Little did I know that, you know, 25 years later, we'd still be talking about this helmet and people would still be so intrigued. And it's, it's like, it's kind of funny because a fan made me my helmet and literally it's traveled around the world. And for me, it's just such a cool thing to know that fans have held it, they've touched it, people have cried. It just brings joy. It's almost like a ray of sunshine when they see this thing. So it's very cool. I love, I love her. As a kid in junior high school, 7th, 8th grade, I picked up mythology on my own. I read a lot about it. I, I was, it was just like a hobby for me. I was fascinated by it. And then all these years later, for me to end up playing Hercules, was the guy that I, it was one of the most well-known figures in mythology. It was, it wasn't, it, when I first got the call for it, I, I thought to myself, okay, I'm kind of a big guy, but I'm not like, 300 pound steroid no net kind of guy so I figured that's what they wanted and they said no they're looking for an NFL quarterback size guy they're looking for a guy that looks like he could do the decathlon or something so I said okay so when I actually got lucky enough to get the role I was more nervous the first year we did five two-hour movies before it became a series I was more nervous working with Anthony Quinn and for those young ones out there don't know who Anthony Quinn is he's one of the great actors um, from the golden age of Hollywood I was more nervous working with him than being Hercules, so um, I, I, I think the writing was so good. What I liked about it, there was a lot of really good values, a lot of good morals in Hercules. We ended up being in 176 countries. We passed Baywatch as the most watched TV show in the world, so that was an honor. And the letters that came in from people was all that I became, for, for kids that grew up with a dad, I got a lot of letters from people saying I'm like a father figure to them, and that was like a lot of weight too, it was kind of weird. And I, but I felt honored. But I think some of the things that hit me the most were four different times we had Make-A-Wish kids come down there and spend time with me. And the, every time it was just, I didn't feel worthy enough. I mean, I'm, I'm these kids, these kids are dying. And their, their last wish in this world was to meet me. I was, it, it, was, it was overwhelming and it was, it was an honor at the same time. And for me, um, it really opened up my eyes to the power of the medium of television and the messages that you can put out there, good and bad. And I really wanted to put more positive messages out there because so there's so much hate in the world, there's so much divisiveness, there's so much anger, and I don't get it, you know? It's like, if people have differing opinions of me, I don't get angry about it, you know? To me, it's like, guys, relax. It's okay to have different points of view. So I've been always impressed with the amount of work that's come my way that I've been fortunate enough to give that really, for the most part, I think have... have um, have a strong positive message. So I used to go and help, uh, help out at this school in South Central in Los Angeles when I lived there. Uh, it's an outreach program and it's a blighted neighborhood. I mean, there's nobody, there's, no one's got any dads. Or most of the teenage girls are pregnant. And, you know, uh, crime and drugs have just laid waste to the community. And there was this one class, this film class that still existed, even though the school had no art, drama, music, phys ed, band, had nothing at this school. And uh, there was this young girl one day I went in to help. Uh, I shouldn't say anything. Anyway, I said, what do you want to do? She goes, I want to do a little film where my older self gives me advice. And I said, okay, let's tell me what, what let's pick two or three things in your life so you could give, you, give yourself advice about. Where are you having trouble in your life? What are the difficult areas? And she said, well, I've been raped since I was a baby, me and my sister. And uh, then my dad's gone to prison for life because the immigration people found him. And uh, then my mom's gone to prison because she protected him and she kind of projected me and she said I was lying and they locked her up as well. So. Now I'm in foster care and, and my brother, my foster brother's beat me up all the time. I'm, I'm listening to this, like reeling, punch drunk. And uh, I said, okay, so what do you want to tell yourself? She said, well, it's not really for me. I want to do it with my sister. I said, why your sister? She goes, because she's really falling down the well and she's just reacting badly and she's taking a lot of drugs and she just is not communicating with the world. And I said, why would you be okay? She said, because I have books and I have poetry and I know I'm going to get to college because I go to the library and I see my way out of here. 
And that's the single answer that's the most powerful thing I've ever heard in the world. Art gives people a vision of what's possible. How do you feel about the influence that uh, that art has on people? Art's influenced my entire life. Even when I was getting in trouble as a kid, I would, I was always drawing. My mom went to FIT, so I came from like a family of artists, and I grew up drawing comic books. And you know, I thought my whole life I'd be like a graphic designer or you know some kind of artist. So art always kept me, even when I was in bad situations or in the neighborhood or things are happening on the streets there was always something with art and then you know it manifested into acting into my life so art's always followed me it's been a huge part of my life from from the jump you know many many years ago it's things like this too like comic comics were a subculture you know things like this were, you know uh, art was maybe looked upon different it's like now being an artist is almost cooler than being an athlete you know what I mean like being a true artist is so it's like just embrace whatever it is you love whatever that is you know if it's athletics if it's art but you have to embrace it I think Art is just another uh, iteration of yourself, like you know what I'm saying, and you have to embrace yourself. So if it's art, truly go lean into it, you know what I mean, and use it because you're going to learn so much about yourself through your art. Don't shy away from it because other people aren't doing it or uh, whatever. If it's street art, you know, street art's like acceptable now. We used to do graffiti as kids and hide it, and now it's like people pay people to do graffiti. Um, it's just lean into that art because right now we live in a very artistic world right now. People are expressing themselves through their art. We have many mediums that we can do it through, whether it be people are doing their own YouTube videos, their own, you know, Snapchat stuff. They're, you know, that you can create your art and put it in all different places. I think it's an exciting time to be an artist right now. Does life get any less exciting as you get older? No, no, it gets more exciting because you have more knowledge and you have more you can you can judge up situations quicker and know what not to do or what you should do or what what's missing in life i'm not done you know i still get excited i just finished two films back to back i still get excited every time i read a script every time i'm i'm asked to do something i get asked a lot lately and i, I do a lot of voiceovers i've done video games Working. i did uh, black Working. ops 2 you know I, just, <laughs> I love it man i couldn't do nothing else and, and my life was saved by art and by culture. I want you to keep making film, man. Everything starts with the story. Keep writing and write about your life. Write about what you see. Write about what you see. Thank you, man. Appreciate right. your time. Dante? My name is Dante Luna. Dante? Dante, yes. I'm that's an epic, here. epic name. Appreciate it. You got a lot to live up to with it. Where you got selling your forearm? That's dope. Yes, yeah, so that's my selling. Go on. Right on, man. Shut out. So Cell is one of my favorite bad guys. You have excellent taste. <laughs> oh my god. How do you reflect on that role, the role of Cell? Well, it, it, it's probably one of my uh, uh, closest to my heart because it was one of the first characters I ever did that uh, I guess reached as many people as it did. Uh, and became, I guess, a little bit iconic in a sense. Um, and also, it's interesting when people come up to me and they go, oh, that was a really big part of my childhood and it meant a lot to me. Um, that means a lot to me, you know what I mean? Um, and it doesn't really feel like it was that long ago when we first did it. Did you see this? Did you see this? You know, the Comic Cons have a lot of different things to do. Um, one of the things I like to do is come hang out with the artist. Um, people with a pen in their hand or a pencil in their hand, um, who are drawing. Um, I spend most of my time at this part of the convention. And uh, right now, she's drawing perfect cell. DBZ characters very often. I forgot how fun they are. It's pretty cool. It's coming up right now. Thank you. I tell everybody I'm cool with the red right now. Nobody believes me. Well, that's how it is. <laughs> that's how it is right there. The first video we did uh, was called Back to Action. Yep. And uh, it was just like you were getting back to the Comic Con circuit. And, um, you know, as I got to know you and I got to know your story, um, I realized that you never really left the action. I realized after I got done being all over TV as a world famous in your face superhero that the world was full of the unsung heroes. And uh, I needed to go work with them for a while. I had a global reputation to live up to at the age of 18. And uh, when I left, 
I felt like I had some measuring up to do, so I went and did it. You know, growing up, I'm gonna tell you Austin, like growing up, um, I was never cool enough to be a Power Ranger. I was always a putty. I never got picked. <laughs> I never got picked to be a Power Ranger. I always waited, I waited. I didn't get to be Bulk of Skull neither. I was, I was a putty. Power Rangers wouldn't have been anywhere near as important without 100,000 putties to beat up every episode. <laughs> yeah. So, let's yeah. call it like it is. Power Rangers, I mean, they look good in their suits, but they're not doing anything. They don't have putties to beat up. <laughs> Behind the scenes of my interview with Phil Lamar, I met him in Rhode Island, uh, Rhode Island Comic Con. I met him again in uh, DC. And, um, didn't get a chance to do an interview, so he's gonna do the interview now. I got one question I wanna ask him. Just one thing. I just got one question. Just one. Just one thing I wanna ask him. With the camera on. Oh yeah, and I just found out Brain is here from Pinky and the Brain. I gotta go meet him. I wanna meet Brain so bad. At the core of these interactions, uh, some people oh, yeah. wait their whole lives just to meet um, their favorite celebrity, their favorite star. So. You know, you don't know the type of relationship people have with the stories until you get to this line. All right. <laughs> What's up, guys? What's up, Project? All right, so how do you want to do? Um, yeah, you, you, you can chill right there. Just right here? Yeah, cool. All right. So, can you just tell me about this guy? I want the, I want the story behind the UPS, the UPS guy. guy. Well, that was uh, a sketch that um, I used to do on stage at the Groundlings Theater in LA. Uh, where I was a member doing improv and sketch comedy. And when I auditioned uh, for Mad TV, I performed that character for them. And I think it's part of the reason they hired me. So I had been doing it before Mad TV and uh, continued to do it you know, on the show too. I mean, I've been really, really fortunate to work on a lot of really good projects and things that, have, you know, that people really respond to. Um, and yeah, we did a lot of sketches on that TV and a lot of characters. Um, and every once in a while, if you're lucky, you get something, a character that, you know, that people respond to in a, in a way. And they're just like, there's something about that character that people just really liked. Um, of the stuff I've got here, a lot of it is animated stuff. Um, but all of it is stuff that I didn't create. The UPS guy is the only thing here that is mine. I'm here in Portsmouth, Rhode Island. Uh, came to pick up my homie Lucas. He's a really dope, perfect cell. He cosplays as a cell. This cell is awesome. I got all my scale for uh, the segment dimensions off an action figure. They weren't 100% accurate to the show, but it seemed they had more space for movement, so I followed that just to make it easier for me. I think next time I'm gonna try to match it more towards the show. I did last minute repairs on these. Yes. Ugh, I hate that. <laughs> Looks like we can't even make it. Can I take a picture? See, he's really uh, popular right now. People are stopping to take pictures with Cell. Cell's a real popular character. Excuse me, can I take a picture of you? <laughs> Who the hell do you think you are going in your dress like that? Hey, she already is. I want one with mine anyway. Is that what we're doing? Can you do that? Yeah, that's definitely the best cell I've ever seen. I saw a dude that had a cell on the forearm on a tattoo like the first time. No, not you. Not me? Damn. How are you reflecting on the role of, of a brain? I look at it as a real high point in my uh, career because I got to work with Rob Paulson, Pinky, and we've remained friends and we've done other projects together, but we just love hanging out. We just have that synchronicity, that great give and take of comedy, even in our you know day-to-day -day lives. We call each other and make each other laugh. But the brain was a great character for you know because we all have that struggle. We all want to take over the world in our own way, in you know, our own little world, whatever it is. You want to take over the world of interview. You know? Yes. I want to take over the world of animation. You know? So, and the beauty of the brain is that at the end of every episode, even as the plan crashes and burns, he still gets up 
and dusts himself off and goes, come Pinky, back to the lab to plan for tomorrow night. <laughs> and Pinky will say, why Brain, what are we going to do tomorrow night? And I, I, it's the key line of the whole thing, he says. The same thing we do every night, Pinky. Try to take over the world. What kind of relationship have you had with this awesome. character? Well, I'm much taller than the character. He's only a two inch tall lab mouse. Uh, but, um, I donated you know, it's, it's just, yeah. as a human, it's just brought me so much opportunity. Because it was the first time that I'd really been able to kind of co headline a, a show. And a lot more work came to me after that. And do you have any favorite bad guys? You know, the Joker's brilliant. You know, I love, I love Hamill's Joker. I love Heath Ledger's Joker. You know, one in the real world, one in cinema, and one in animation. Mark Hamill's Joker is so layered, so you know, he's he's an endearing character, even though he's a psychotic killer. You love him. When I was a kid growing up, I used to spend my Saturdays at the theater, either watching musicals or horror films, one or the other. Lugosi, Karloff, Janie. All of that stuff, all the early, early stuff, um, and uh, all the all the musicals. You know, it's big into musicals. They say that life imitates art. Okay, and in a way that's true because people are influenced by it in one way or another. It uh, some things make you happy, some things make you sad, some things make you pissed off. Um, it, it generates emotion, and uh, and that's that's what art all is all about. Any any form of art, whatever you believe your creator was, the biggest compliment and homage that you could pay to that creator is to be a creator of good and beneficial things yourself. Stay focused in the positive and follow your dream. No matter where it takes you, no matter how hard things become, if you're passionate about something, you stay with it and it will be yours and you will own it. We try to think outside of the box and usually what we say in JC2, my partner is on the sidelines because she doesn't like to get interviewed, but anything we can find in the streets, and I call it beg, borrow, and stolen art, street art. We beg, borrow, and steal things that we need to, to get to these conclusions of this art. So we, we are not one dimensional anymore. We really want to create a sculpture. What I wanted to create today, bro, was a living room from somebody who would live in the corporate agenda and have a solid gold frame. That frame is stained with the blood of soldiers and the blood of children. There's no reason why we're fighting wars when we can't cure cancer, when we can't help the homeless and cure poverty. We should not be at war. Those trillions of dollars should be spent with the awareness of helping people and the less fortunate. The only way that we can make a difference is through this wall and through this art and through this project. Since Zero started a group called TAG, the Army Grows, I am down with it 100%. Uh, I just definitely, once again, I can't thank you enough for coming down and blessing us with your talents. Hope it comes out good because you got it. It's like multi layer right here. Is that something you probably comment on that show? Right? Right, exactly. Yeah, that's good. Just let it dry a little bit, bro. But like, I will leave it in the sun a little bit. It's the single most important aspect of my understanding of myself. Uh, what has happened has been uh, that uh, I, you know, I started off without being able to talk, walk, <laughs> you know, and uh, literally learned everything. And I learned how to work in theater. I learned how to work in music. I learned how to work in uh, film, television. It took a long time. Uh, art has been the single most important aspect of my existence because of the fact that it has allowed me to grow. And um, once you really become, live your life as an artist, you really start to realize a lot more about yourself and about others. It's a very strong understanding. Oh man, here we go. H how do you think this film impacted uh, Selena, Selena's legacy? This is probably the, the, uh, one of the most uh, rewarding experiences in uh, 
you know, with my time spent on in this industry, uh, to document her in this manner was uh, amazingly difficult. It's probably this, the hardest movie I've ever made. But it really, uh, I was so grateful for Jennifer being on time. She was uh, perfect for understanding that she should have won the Academy Award for Best Actress in this performance. It was truly a stellar performance. And she did great all the way around. And I'm now about to sign it. We talked about how the film has impacted Selena's legacy. Right. What is it about Selena herself and her legacy that has lasted and meant so much, not only to the Latino population, but to music lovers everywhere? You know, this was a, a very special moment in time in the history of uh, the Latino community because she was and truly is still to this day one of the greatest uh, artists that we've had. Uh, she was quite young when she left us, only 23. But she ended up giving us something that uh, to this day has not been repeated and I don't know if they ever will be. Um, she was one of a kind. How do I feel about the influence that art has on people in all the different art forms? Uh, I think uh, some of it can be very, very negative, but I think uh, a lot of it can be very, very positive. Uh, people can... Uh, kind of use their alter personality through their art. They can uh, live out their goals through their art. They can, it's a release. Uh, sometimes it's just a huge release for people. And you know, pro wrestling is an art form. And um, especially when I started in the beginning, it was a, a true art form and, and it was a way to express yourself. Uh, your alter egos and personality traits that might not normally come out, you know. So it's just like a, an extension of yourself through your art, whatever your art is. Art ha does have an influence on people. When I saw Fresh Prince and Will Smith doing his thing, you know what I'm saying? And even before Fresh Prince of Bel Air, like when he was making music, parents just don't understand. I mean, to me, that was just like, man, this is a kid that comes from Philly. I'm from Chicago. Uh, I can do it too. You know what I mean? Because you would see him do interviews. I think that's. I think it's dope when you see actors uh, be transparent and, and do interviews and uh, tell tell you how they made it. You know what I'm saying? Because then you can go, oh wait, I came from the same type of city. Well, I came from the same type of hood. I can do the same thing. You know what I mean? It's you don't have to feel like. Um, you can't do it as well. You know what I mean? So I think the arts does help us out a lot. We enjoy what actors do and then know that they can do it too. Every time I talk to people, I say, hey, you can do it too. I'm a kid from the south side of Chicago, man. You know what I mean? And I, and I made it, I'm doing it too as well. I wanted to act for a long time. I used to watch a lot of old black and white movies. <laughs> so I used to watch Betty Davis all the time. And I got really caught up in, in the, those films and a lot of films. And then I also, because I, wanted, I was so young and I wanted to act, and I didn't see a lot of kids out there, I watched anything that Jodie Foster was in. Anything. There was another kid, and she was nothing alike. Um, I was nothing like she always plays really tough, kind of like tough kid, rough edges, which was not me. <laughs> but I still, I adored her. I loved her acting. I loved seeing another kid out there doing what she was doing. And I think that that, and I had to see everything she was in. That, that kept me going for a long time. For the people who have never met me, who am I? I am. I'm Jadi Williams, and I am a creative person. I'm a spoken word artist, I'm an artist, I'm a curator of space, of events. Um, I, I am all of me all the time. I am a very proud and out queer black lesbian, and that has a lot to do with my work and the spaces that I intentionally create, making sure that people like me, people unlike me, people who feel like they haven't been heard or thought of like me really have a place to exist, to be, to explore themselves and each other. Um, and so that's really how I got into this this habit, this 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 life force, this purpose of making art, making space, making time uh, for for me and mine. I feel like, you know, I was definitely born uh, an expressionist and a, an expressive person, a writer. I've been writing, journaling from very early on, and uh, I was 
slightly reclusive, very much an only child, very much kept to myself. And so people in high school would see me writing all the time and would ask me, what you always writing about? What is that? And I would share it. I was open to share it. And a lot of times what I was writing about really inspired other people because it was either something that they were thinking about going through and couldn't put the words to or had never thought about. And so I learned then that, okay, I perhaps have a skill set or a talent or behavior that other people don't have and got comfortable enough sharing it. And then by the time I got to college, somebody invited me to an open mic, something I had never heard of before. And I got into the space and I was like, yo, people do this all the time. Like they just, they're just here sharing. And so I immediately started creating more work to be able to share it on platforms like that. And once I learned that this was a full out art form, that this that this was a full on profession, I mean, things like Deaf Poetry Jam and, and other poets and just dope ass people just doing amazing things, um, I was like, yeah, nah, this is something that I could do. And also, the more I performed, the 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 more I lived, the the longer I felt like I was going to live because I was sharing my truth, I was expressing my truth, I was exploring my truth, but more importantly, I was creating my truth. Um, and so that that journey of writing essentially was that. And also, I feel like living and loving was also part of my journey of writing because like the more I experienced, the more I was able. To, to write about. Hey yo, I am a champion of trying shit that can't be done. And if we can't be one, you best believe a change gonna come. I live to rip it. No need to get specific. You gonna feel it when I spit it, maybe then you'll finally get it. Life is pain. See what I mean to say is life is strain. And the time we spent recovering, we should have just maintained. Meaning balance. Rise up, raise up, meet the challenges. The calendar's the calendar, but life is in the passages. They say that time heals, I say it just reveals. So now my heart is stone, soul is fire, will is steel. Elementally charged is energy elementary. Repel the negativity, only positive shall enter me. Meaning my temple see, or should I say my chamber. Loaded then release it at velocity of danger. No stranger to the struggle, my bubble burst at birth. So before you come to hate me, I'll be sure to love you first. The reverse of the expected could be true from my perspective. Even I hate me sometimes, and that's proof that we connected, church. I think we, within our society, we really need art because um, we all express ourselves in so many different ways and we find ourselves through the expressions of others. How often have Shakespeare's plays been done throughout the ages and everyone finds something that resonates with them. It doesn't matter that maybe we don't speak exactly that way, but we still find something in it and we learn about ourselves through something that was written so long ago, but we haven't really changed that much. Sometimes you need to draw how you feel instead of speak it, or um, you need to dance it out. Um, all of that stuff, I think it's, it's really necessary. I feel like I can say I'm an artist. I don't have to, without necessarily bragging about myself, I think Oh, I value art more than anything else. So uh, a lot of the best artists really struggle with, you know, with a lot of artists struggle in a lot of ways because art sometimes is a therapy for them to kind of help them get through something. It's such a different journey, I imagine, for everybody. Like things can, things can happen that can speak to you. And the, I'm sure there's so many artists that just struggle trying to figure out what it is that they do. Some of the most talented people I know are guys that that listen to so and listen to so much material. They watch so much material. They study so much. They have a hard time finding out what it is that they do because they have such reverence for the material. They don't know how they can fit into it. And I think it's just experimenting, meeting more people, hanging out with other artists, uh, just inspiring yourself. Sometimes, like taking a break from your art, can be very inspiring. Going on a trip going on a spiritual journey, like just go out by yourself, go somewhere beautiful, just think about things. It might be the only thing that separates human beings from animals, you know? Because I, I mean, I've seen animals love. You know, some people would say love. I would say it's art. We're the ones who can create art. You've never seen an animal create art. You see them love, sure. But it's what defines humanity. It's so why why do you fight why do you fight for your rights on earth why do you fight to be who you are you fight so that you can enjoy what life has and that is art everybody reads books watches tv sees movies but when it comes to actual art 
I don't think people understand that it's it's in every single thing they do every single day. Every every all these artists are contributing in tiny ways they don't understand. Like like who's drawing the cover on the math book that you're looking at in third grade? That's an artist, you know. And so it's super important. My whole family's artists. My you know, I'm an actor, my wife is a director and an actor, my son is an actor and a singer, and my daughter is an actual artist, artist. That's how we roll. I mean, Brad, for an actor that has such a long uh, list of credits to his resume, and, and many of them classics, I mean, talk about you being involved in this all the way through. You know, it's been seven movies. Um, they do pay me. <laughs> that, that helps, yeah. You know, and, and that part is good. I, you know, the most, the coolest thing about uh, doing it this is to watch the slow and insidious rise of Mr. Mancini, <laughs> who, who had zero power in the first movie. And then I sort of noticed him kind of sneaking around and looking here and there in the second. Third one, a little more, and fourth one, he almost was in control. I was really starting to get notes from him. He would sit there and actually tell me what to do. And then, after that, it's been nothing but complete and utter Don dominance. <laughs> the position I like to be in. The film business has always had you know, a huge mystique to see images on the big screen, which makes the difference between that and watching stuff at home, which you always feel like you invited that actor or that character in your home, so you feel closer. You don't feel that big mystique to the characters and to your idols and to the movie stars you do when you go to see them on the big screen. So I think characters on the big screen have a much more effect and influence on anybody. Uh, who goes whether you're you know, 10 years old or 20 years old. It's a big mystical image looking at you in the theater versus a little box in your house. And you invited that guy in your house because you put on his TV show. So it's a whole different dynamic. But the bottom line is it has enormous effect on people. Movies are kind of a conduit, man, into culture. So it's like, you know, it can reflect good and it can reflect not good. So there's movies that actually can inspire you to change, and I like the, the people movies. I like movies, the superhero movies are all fun, and there's a different kind of dynamic to that. But I like, you know, like the movie I was in, Karate Kid, and it's just movies about people and human, human stories. Uh, you know, like everybody wants to be uh, Daniel LaRusso, you know, after the Karate Kid. Everybody wanted to take karate lessons, you know, it's an example, you know, many more movies. But uh, yeah, I think, uh, you know, film has a huge impact in culture, I think, and I think it's a great escape, you know go into a, a good film for a couple hours and come out changed and inspired, motivated, challenged, that's what it's all about. I encourage artists. I think, you know, art is the way of the world, you know, it's like it reflects, reflects us. We learn from each other. We're all kind of one, you know. The first thing is to get in touch with yourself and to be honest. And if you're, if you're, if you're seeking the truth in your art and in truth in your expression, the truth is going to translate and it can't help but make a ripple effect. So start, you know, it's not about getting people knowing who you are and making an impact and seeing that as much as it is starting in you. So if the change happens in you and it's organic and it goes out, it's going to catch on. It kind of can't not. When I was a kid, we did not really have internet, right? And the internet is the world stage, right? So don't be afraid of locking yourself in a bedroom for a few hours and just sing your heart out and do whatever passionate you're, you're good at. Even, you know, flying a little remote control plane or on a skateboard. Do anything what you're, you're good at. You can't be good at everything. Well, you may be, but concentrate on one thing and get really, really good at that and, and just record it, put it on the net, even if you've got one or ten viewers. Because, you know, there's kids out there that become multi-millionaires, but very famous and stuff like that. And it's not just about the money, it's about being very passionate and sharing your, your talent and your dreams with other people, all kids as well, that may look up to you one day. You know what I mean? So just stick at it and go for it. Well, art comes in so many different forms and whatever you find, whatever stimulates you is art. If you, if you get involved in a fandom, be it Star Wars, Star Trek, Marvel, DC, whatever it is, Power Rangers, it could be anything. If that is something that, that, that speaks to you and has a really positive effect on your life, 
then that's a good thing, right? You know, it's it, it's say like Star Wars and talking about Star Wars and being friends with people that, that like Star Wars helped me be creative as a kid. And I used to make up stories and do all that kind of stuff. So that helped me. We used to play Star Wars in the street. So that helped me as an actor to, to really kind of let go and have fun with it. And as a puppeteer as well, you know, I found I followed that the same the same ideas. You know, I was involved in theatre, and that's what kept me. You know, it, 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 it kind of really moulded me as a kid. And then it took me on into an adult and eventually into, into the profession. So if I hadn't been able to get involved in that, I don't know what I would have done. But I was always I was always going to follow that path. Luckily, you know, I I managed to, to find my way and, and and it led me here. I think art is a, a very powerful tool to create change, both uh, personally and uh, for society at large. And I think, or I hope that um, people's opinion of art and its power will change because I think a lot of people think of art as, as not relevant anymore uh, mainly because of like postmodernism that it's all empty and it's just very subjective and, and very uh, more like a elite thing but it, it really isn't like everyone has stories everyone wants to express themselves and we really shouldn't limit like oh these are the creative people and these are the other people like I, I don't see a distinction there and so I really hope that people will see art as a, as a powerful tool so that they can use personally to transform themselves and and also uh, uh, give like uh, the good ideas to society that can propel us forward as a as a species. <laughs> I'm a huge believer that you should do what you love to do in life and follow your heart, develop your passions, and find what it is that gives you joy. It's a wonderful thing that artists so often are seeking what is inside of them to express that. Uh, that it, and I think that there are different philosophies of it. There's one side that believes that I think you have to go through the suffering and pain and express through that pain, that like the dark lady of the sonnet, the unattainable that you can never have. But I'm a big believer in expression of artistry through joy and happiness and fun. And I try to create all of my characters that I do voice with to have that sense of joy and that sense of fun and that sense of innocence because you know, life can make people cynical so easily, but you can choose innocence and choose joy. Uh, my name is Joe St. Pierre. I'm an artist and writer of comics. Um, I've worked for Marvel, DC, Image, Valiant, IDW, Boom Studios. Uh, I am the artist who has drawn more number one issues with Spider-Man or his cast than any other artist. We have family pictures of me, you know, when I was like four or five with comics in my hand or drawing pictures with comic characters and stuff like that. So it was something that I guess I kind of grew up with, you know. I think art is a natural expression of human beings. In the same way that we have this energy to kind of hurt each other and create bombs and swords and clubs and things like that, we have the opposite energy. We have the, the need to create and to express ourselves and be recognized. And that's one way to do it. Yeah, Spidey was like right up there with, you know, when I was a, when I was a child, I learned how to read by reading comic books. And Spider-Man was my favorite comic book character as a child. And then when I decided I wanted to do this for a living, Spider-Man was like the character that I had to draw professionally. So I was on this like mission, like I had this focus. I was like, I have to draw Spider-Man and I'm not stopping until I do it. So he's he's been an entertainment kind of, he's been a character that's entertained me as a child. He's been a character that kind of helped me with my career goals. And so uh, I just love the character. He's my favorite. How do you feel about the influence that, that art has on people? Well, it's an expression of our being civilized. There's something more than just foraging for meat or something to eat. Art embraces everything beyond just staying alive. It's staying alive in your head, finding out, creating, satisfying curiosity. Every human being wants to know the answer to at least two questions. Are we alone in the universe? And where did we come from? And then, of course, the third question is what happens after we die? And if 
art does nothing else. It helps to try and answer any or all of those questions. They're vital questions. If we don't think, we never probably will have the answers, but in asking the questions, we become something more than a, a house fly or a small animal or whatever. We are, we are human beings. And to be human is to be curious. And uh, the, the only expression of that humanity is asking those questions, trying to find out. No other species does it that we know of. So that's how important art is. I just met effectively my childhood hero in the form of a voice actor. Um, the man responsible for me doing what I'm doing right now is sitting two rows behind me and I wasn't going to bother him yesterday and his son came over and liked my work and commissioned me and then they found out who he was and then I kind of had to crack the heart open a little bit and um, I got emotional just now. I met my childhood hero and it was an absolute amazing experience that I'm I'm shaking right now as I'm drawing this drawing right now, whether people know it or not. Oh. Holy Jesus. That's what Dennis did for Jared. Wow. Wow. Fantastic. <laughs> One more time. I don't know when I hope I'll see you sometime. Yeah, uh, Dennis. Dennis. When I first got the role, I had trouble because I didn't picture myself as a superhero. And it was only, believe it or not, years later that Stan Lee himself, the creator, answered the question of how, how any ordinary person would feel trying to be a superhero. You can only make it up, you can only guess at what qualities you'd like to have or have to have uh, to do all those things physically and morally and so you didn't have to start out feeling you had superhero qualities you just made that up and thought well what do I have to do I have to be brave I have to be uh, fearless uh, get out there and have a social conscience all of those are common characteristics we all have. So you didn't have to have the big bulging muscles um, or, you know, $20 million teeth to be a superhero. If you just cared and wanted to do good, that was enough and the muscles would come with it. I'm working on an art empowerment piece um, to try and inspire people to reach their full potential. So I, I want to get your thoughts and opinion on uh, the influence that art has on people. People need art as much as they need air to breathe. You can't just do your daily job and then go home and watch television and go to sleep. You've got to have some feeling of art around you, some feeling of, of beauty, some feeling of something that isn't practical, but it, it brings you pleasure and it brings you satisfaction and the thing about art is it makes you feel better when you look at it and it makes you feel there's more to life than just living and dying. Art I find any any country that doesn't have art doesn't survive very long and that's about the best way I can put it. I want to ask you about um, the power of uh, of getting ideas on paper. Um, can you reflect on that, the power of putting a pen to paper? It's great because it's sort of, a, you don't know where it's going to take you, uh, especially in the early days for me. It's like a lot of times, you know, you'd have an idea of, uh, you know, I don't know, say it's, a, say it's a mutant. And you're thinking like, oh, I'll say a mutant rabbit or a cross of a mutant rabbit and a mutant elephant and something else. And you start doodling and you don't know what's going to come out throughout the process. And it's what I... I call a series of happy accidents. Um, so it's like, you know, and I've got, you know, sketchbooks, um, many, many sketchbooks from years ago that are just filled with the craziest thoughts because sometimes while you're drawing something else, and that's why, you know, say somebody, I've had people say to me at times, they go like, well, I sit there and I look at the blank piece of paper and I don't know what to draw. And I say like, well, just start drawing and see what happens because 
while you're like physically drawing something, your mind starts going to the state of, you know, it starts becoming a, a visual uh, experience where ideas pop in your head, visual things pop in your head, um, and it leads you, can lead you in so many different directions that you weren't even thinking about when you sat down to, um, to draw. And, you know, don't get intimidated by the white piece of paper. It's like, it's like buying a new car <laughs> or you get a new car to you. It's the most precious thing in the world until you um, put the first dent in it. <laughs> Once you put that first dent in it, it's like, ah, that's just a car. I'm going to treat it like, you know, we're going to drive it to work, drive it through the snow, drive it through the mud, you know, go out, do whatever. But it's like, so a blank piece of paper can be that same kind of thing. It may seem too precious and you don't want to, uh, you're too scared to, to touch it too scared to do something with it but once you start making those first few marks um, it's just everything sort of that's where the magic happens that's where uh, everything evolves um, you know right up to this day I know that other people have learned how to do you know drawing on Wicom tablets and computers and there's so many different ways um, to uh, uh, to create artwork um, some you know from the oldest you know people using a paint and a paintbrush or frescoes or um, uh, painting on masonite and wood or whatever they had tools available you know cave painters you know cavemen figuring out how to paint on caves um, a Wicom tablet um, you know it's just another artist tool but to me it's the connection of feeling the pen dragging across the paper the weight of the paper um, what you create um, on that piece of paper that's that's my medium, and that's from my time time period. So that's my magic. Hi, right, Judith. This picture of Leonardo. Um, yeah. In the movie, uh, you draw this picture and, and another mm -hmm. one. I didn't actually draw the picture, but it looked like I did. That is the magic of movie making. Um, what is mine is the writing around it. So all of this is me. Um, and then what I did was we were shooting it. I was writing and trying to make notes, and then I would sort of go over what was already here. What I regret bitterly is that I didn't swipe these. I really wish I had these because they're really beautiful. I, and I don't even know who the artist is. It was probably, you know, someone in the art department on the movie. But they're really cool and um, and I've signed, I signed these, not a lot, but because people are kind of hard to find. When I was about 12 and like the Image Comics boom happened, uh, like that lit me on fire. And I knew that I was pro probably going to do this for the rest of my life. Um, and so, you know, I went to art school and, and, you know, studied everything I could get my hands on and started making comics. And, uh, and then, you know, I had like big moments of doubt, you know, like when I came, I got out of art school and started drawing comics. I, I, I had this thought that all of a sudden my heroes were now my competition. And I, I had like an existential crisis. I, I fucking fell apart. And then I came to realize it's not really that type of game. You know, like we're not all after the exact same dollar. Um, you know, there's room for everybody to come in and, you know, figure, figure out their way. I guess type of art? If I was one of the artists on Artist Alley, doing unbelievable work and I saw some guy with a sharpie drawing circles on a sock and selling them I'd be angry so I don't go to Artist Alley because I might get jumped over there. Nakamura has arrived here. Good to see you. Yeah look at that. Good to see you. I'm sorry about the stuff Ginger was saying to you. Uh, I just saw this. Ginger go down. Uh, good good man. I, I don't want to keep you. I know you're really busy but I thought the fans might enjoy seeing you here. Right here in Marlboro, Massachusetts. Good luck to you, CJ. Okay. So, what are the odds? Okay, go ahead. I don't know if this qualifies as artwork. You know, I, I, you know, what we try, we, we believe that what we do in the ring is uh, an art form, but I don't know if this qualifies as art. Professional wrestling is as much about man versus himself as it is man versus man. So you do try to test yourself, see, uh, try to get better every day. Try to, in some cases, do some things that were more extreme, although it's been a while since that was the case. And uh, I think when I was breaking in, just the idea of uh, uh, the immense amount of travel I was doing uh, for so little money, if any money, 
sleeping accommodations is uh, off in the back seat of my car. And uh, so I was kind of testing my own will to see how badly I wanted to do it. And had it not been for those experiences, uh, I probably would have quit when things got tough. Because make no mistake about it, they did get tough. I reflect on it every day. You know, it is my craft, and it's, and it's an art form. Therefore, I'm an artist. Uh, so I, uh, every match I wrestle as if it's my last. And to this day, I'm 39 years old. So I still try to continue to do that. And I will until I can't. I shoot for the stars and, uh, and always be creative and, and do not fear the original because without originality, you're nothing. Oh, yes. I mean, this current vessel, you know, it is what it is. It is a human vessel. But I am 2009 years old. My soul will live forever. I am immortal because of my broken brilliance. So all you can do is grind every day. That is all we, that is all we do in the great war. The oldest one known to man, light versus dark. Yeah. Hello, mate. I think art uh, has a tremendous influence on people, whether it be the performing arts, the visual arts, uh, audio arts, the, the, the gamut. Um, it, it, it provokes thought, it provokes feeling, um, it, it makes you feel good, which makes your health better. It's stimulating. Um, it, it's something that can inspire you in a moment. It's something that can complete a moment. Art across the board is very important to me. I could not live without it, and I don't think we as humans can live without it. I think that it's the thing that keeps us going as a race. Art and culture, and cultures all over the world. Um, I think it's the, one of the main things that helps, helps us tick and to keep going. It's, you know, it's almost as, as important as food and the air we breathe and the water we drink. Art's a tricky concept because art is in the eye of the beholder. And we've all seen so-called art that we don't like. That's our own subjective opinion. But what's really struck me in the last, last decade or so is how we've had so much art removed from our schools, our public schools. When I was a kid walking home from elementary school, there'd be a girl in front of me lugging a bass fiddle. There'd be people with clarinets and trumpets and violins and cellos and boys with drum sets. And whether or not they all became musicians or not isn't the point. The point is that that guy with the drums may have had a band in high school that may have changed his life and many of them worked in band or orchestra later on or glee clubs later on and that expands your knowledge of math it's just it's just the fact that it does it, it it's something that just triggers down deep inside and i remember in school taking an art history class and it was all slides and yet things i learned in that class have helped me identify things i read for the rest of my life I remember being dragged with all the boys to have to see operas and things when I was in elementary school and junior high school. And yet, even though I didn't enjoy some of those experiences, there were other things that I remember to this day uh, that may have even prompted me to get into theater. Uh, uh, drama classes, um, photography classes, they're getting cut left and right. And Sometimes it's not about making everybody a star or a professional actor or a repertory actor or a Broadway actor or dancer, but sometimes it just, if it just teaches two or three kids per class great gifts about public speaking so that when you go up for a job or when you interview for your job, you know how to present yourself. Because I know really smart, really talented kids that don't know how to speak anymore because they become a prisoner of their iPhone and they never had, because they've been texting too much, they've never learned how to look somebody in the eyes and just talk to them one-on-one. -on -one. So that 
happy accident, that gift you can get, taking drama in middle school or in high school, or the idea of being on a crew for lighting or painting the scenery or moving the scenery and being part of that clockwork-like precision of putting a play on. Whatever contribution you make, I think is important to a concept of we're all in it together and an ensemble feeling that is also part of art. It, art's not just always personal. It can also be an ensemble experience. But from that ensemble experience, I think sometimes you find out what your unique voice is. I have very strong like beliefs about this. I feel like the the purpose of any kind of art should be to for for it to be relatable to its audience. For for example, I had um, a girl come up to me a couple cons ago and say, you know, I lost my mom towards the beginning of the Gotham premiere, and um, seeing how Bruce dealt with him losing his parents really gave me the courage to to move on and to fight and to make a difference and to 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 not let it beat me down. And that meant so much to me because that's why I think any artist should do what they do so that it can inspire people and it can, you know, help help people um, in, a, in any kind of way. My notebooks have a lot of energy. I put all my ideas in my notebooks and I just forget about it and I revisit it. You know, when I have, you know, the time and resources to execute an idea. But the most powerful and most responsible thing I do is put the ideas in these notebooks and I develop them as I experience life, as life goes on. Um, you know, I'm, I'm, I never regret writing an idea down and I'm glad that I do because there's certain ideas I'm doing now that I wrote down when I was uh, in high school. I only buy one kind of notebook. It's a red and black notebook. I have about five of them. These are the only ones that look this good. And this is my newest one. This one's signed by Goku, Bret Hart, Natalia Hart, AJ Styles while he was holding the WWE Champion. So he was WWE Champion when he signed that. My name was written by Bret Hart and Bret Hart drew this cartoon on my notebook. <laughs> this is a sticker I got from Big Pun's firstborn child, Star Real's birthday party. Um, she gave these away at her party, her 26th birthday party. Big Pun went platinum at 26. He died at 28. This Superman logo uh, represents uh, my Aunt Sandra who passed away. So I use um, the Superman S to remember her. That's signed by my grandmother and my grandfather on my mom's 50th birthday. Sandra was my mom's sister. This is when I interviewed all the voices of the original um, Ninja Turtles animated series. Um, and that's in the order I interviewed them. And then I also have Steve Levine, who did the lettering for Ninja Turtles, Peter and Kevin Eastman, those two created Ninja Turtles. And then this is one of my favorite things. I put this sticker of Hillary Banks on my notebook because I love Hillary. She's one of my favorite characters. And then later on that year, I met Hillary and I interviewed her and she signed it. That was pretty cool. It's, it's all about connection. It's all about the energy that is generated from your fingers touching either the stylus or the pencil or the pen or the, the keys on a keyboard. And that energy is translated to the page. And if, you're, if you work at it, if you, if you do it enough, again, that energy is going to leap off the page to whoever's reading it. And it's going to, again, it's going to touch them in some way. Uh, may not be in the way that you intended it to, um, but it's going to generate thought. It's going to generate conversation. And it, it's going to, and I've said this before in other places, it's going to ripple out. And those ripples will touch other people and so forth and so on. And it's just continued to grow. What would I do without your smart mouth? Drawing me in, you kicking me out. You got my head spinning. No kidding, I can't pick you down. What's going on in that beautiful mind? And I'm on your magic coaster ride. And I'm so dizzy, don't know what hit me, but I'll be alright. My head's on the water, but I'm breathing fine. You're crazy and I'm out of my mind. Cause oh, me loves all of you. Love your curves and all your costumes. <laughs> Take care, you guys. You guys, you guys.
I'm so boring. I'm so sorry. 